Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we are streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. I'm not going to talk about the openers only because we're starting a little late because we're having some technical issues because I have Zach Liotis with us. But first, I'm going to do the sound session or mm -hmm. therapy session, and then I will introduce Zach and we will start from there. Zach Liotis is a beacon of light in the realm of spiritual awakening and empowerment with a profound understanding of personal energy frequency and a deep connection to the divine. Zach serves as a guide mentor and catalyst for transformation as a spiritual alchemist. Zach is passionate about helping individuals tap into the frequency of God's divine presence within themselves. With a blend of spiritual wisdom and practical insight, Zach empowers others to unlock their inner, potential, overcome obstacles, and manifest their deep desires in alignment with their creator. Throughout her own journey, Zach has discovered the transformative power of aligning with God's frequency. Now she shares her insights and experiences with others, offering guidance on how to navigate life's challenges with faith, grace, and resilience, harnessing the frequency of God's presence and living a life of purpose, abundance, and spiritual fulfillment. Welcome, Zach. Well, hello. Wow. One of these days, we're going to actually see what you look like on camera. <laughs> and I even put my, my lipstick on me, and I'm thinking, it's all going to work out today. Everything's <laughs> going to work out, and here we are. <laughs> I know. What do you do? do what do you do? do? Okay. So, anyways, I just wanted... Well, I, I, we're, I know we're going to talk about spiritual awakening, embracing our, our, the spiritual scripture for renewal and awakening. And I have to tell you that I've been really working on moving further into that because I think this is very critical for us to do. And the one thing that I got the most out of this weekend, and I talked to uh, a coach this morning also, and the one thing that he talked about was until we embrace God into our dream, into our vision, into our life, we're never going to live the way we want to. We're going to stay small and we have to really trust that inner voice and bring God or whatever you want to call it. I don't care if it's Krishna, if it's Buddha, you know, if it's a tree, I don't care. As long as there's something higher than you, because you can't achieve anything until you dream bigger than you. And I have this amazing dream that is starting to formulate, even though I'm going to start where I am, but I'm going to start re expanding it and develop a whole new person. And, and I have to tell you, Zach, because I want to tell you this, and I want the listeners to know too, is in this seminar, the first thing we did is I did a Genesis frequency. And in this frequency, it was about releasing trauma. And once the trauma is gone, it's gone forever. And because our, all of our cells hold trauma, which I've always known. But what we ended up doing is, you know, this intense emotion came up. And the visualization that I saw as I went back into the womb, that was an experience I have never, ever thought I would ever experience again. Being in the womb in that tight, confined space when the original thought form came in of, I don't deserve love. That was mm -hmm. pretty profound. And I cried and cried and cried. We did some breath work on it. And then I went back in and then I also saw my, I was embraced by the Archangel Michael. Cause I've been asking that I want to have that connection where you, all you guys are talking at once in my head again. And, um, 
and Michael embraced me in his wings. And it was like a welcome home from everyone because they've been waiting for me to get back so I could take my spirituality to that next level, which is part of it. I mean, I had to learn to stand on my own. I get that, but I wanted to come back to the fold and I did. And then on Sunday morning, what she did, and this is so bizarre, is we released some more trauma, but she increased my capacity to receive and give love. And I've noticed in my breathing that I keep noticing that I feel like I'm expanding out, contracting in, conspect, contracting out. Cons it's, it's like three times what I was able to do before. And I notice it in my sleep and I'm walking when I'm awake. I mean, I notice it everywhere that I've never seen. So I just wanted to share that because that's, that really is a me the message. And I know that you're moving more in that direction. So I want you to share with our audience what you are doing with that in your life right now, because you're moving into some profound places as well. Yeah, everything you said is just so beautiful because God is fulfillment, right? We find the fulfillment in God through our creator. You could call it universe, you could call it grace, you could call it love, but it's peace and fulfillment. And we, when we reach that place of inner peace and fulfillment, we are whole once again. And when we look at the spirit and not the flesh and grow with the spirit, the flesh starts to dissolve, which is the ego. You're not here to please the world. You're not here to live in the world. You're not here to live in the confines of your mind, but you're here to live in the confines of the spirit because the spirit is free. It's fulfilled. It's love. It's care. It's protected. It's abundant. And when you start to realize and understand that God is fulfillment and that the traumas and pains and suffering were, were the flesh, you start to grow in a different direction. So I came into this world from the age of three, having these conversations with angels. And, you know, later about 15 years ago, well, actually it was 21 years ago, 21, no, sorry, 26 years ago when cancer struck. And I had that vision sitting at the well in Macedonia and, Macedonia, and Jesus coming to me. And I say, I'm not ready to die. And he says, well, we're not ready to take you. You have a mission and big purpose in the world. And the fear start kicking in because I start looking at the flesh. What are people going to say? What are people going to think? You know, how am I going to fit in? It's not about fitting in. When you live in the spirit, it's not about what are people going to say? Who cares? It's not what are people going to do? Who cares? It's not about fitting in. God didn't make people to fit in. God made people to stand out. So until you're ready to stand out, and having that breath of life, because typically people are stuck in their throat or in their heart and their solar plexus, and they're not even breathing in their lower chakras, which is your sacral and your root. Your root is your foundation to life. Your root is your childhood, your womb. And when you do that womb work, that's what you're healing is the traumas and pains from childhood, from birth, from past life. Even if you don't believe in past life, it doesn't matter what you believe in. At the end of the day, we are recycled beings, constantly being recycled with our same traumas, the same pain, until we learn from that. And energetically, we are learning to evolve and grow. So when you find that God within you, that creator within you, you really have to ask yourself the bigger question. You know, how did the creator create me? Did he create me with pain and suffering? No, man created that within me. God creates me with love, abundance, peace, knowingness, unification, and whatever else you feel. Like, God creates us in our unique thumbprint is what I say. No two thumbprints are the same. So why do you want to have this imposter syndrome? Oh, they're doing better than me. I want what they have. You could have more than whatever anyone else has because God has a plan for you. And when you start to read scripture and start to look at scripture, you start to realize that scripture is not religion. Scripture is frequency. When you tap into that God frequency, you're tapping into your creator. And when you ask, how did you create me? What do you think of me? I could guarantee you when you ask God, what do you think of me? You might be shocked. I remember I asked God a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, what do you think about me? And I heard, you're remarkable, but you're stubborn. And I started laughing because <laughs> there's no other way. God's not going to say you're a child of this or that. He's going to be childlike with you and tell you straight. And when I heard you are stubborn, I'd say, that's how you created me. And that's when I was like, no, that's how you turned out. You got to change that about yourself. There's mm -hmm. no need to be stubborn. 
And so I had to work through that. And I look at that and I recognize that. And I have to open up my heart even more to let go because fulfillment is not in stubbornness. Stubbornness allows you to lose sight of really what's out there and opening your doors. So when we become thick headed and stubborn and, and totally out of alignment with ourselves, we start to chase the flesh rather than the spirit. We start to look around the world rather than look within our own soul. So when you look at scripture, when you, when you want to really dig deep within scripture and get into that God frequency through your breath, because you want to breathe all the way to your root, you have to look at it as an energetic frequency of awareness, of hope, of connection, of gratitude, of abundance, of unification, of marriage, you know, the feminine and the masculine. There's two genders. Don't worry about what the flesh says. The spirit created two genders. When Noah created the ark, he had to bring a masculine and a feminine into the ark because when that, when all the storm passed through, they had to appropriate. And that's how we create this world. At the end of it all, when you realize that God is truth, flesh, man is false. Then you start seeing life with different perspective, a different view and a different understanding. So say, when you're playing small, it's because you're working with the flesh and not the spirit because God doesn't know small. God is abundant. God is unlimited. God is warranted that you're going to have whatever you want when you recognize how worthy you are of receiving it. And that's what you went through this week and it's clearing the traumas of past pain, suffering, lower vibrational frequencies. We all go through that. I've been through that. We all go through it. Just different levels of clearing and awareness and moving forward with knowing well, this, that our creator didn't create us in a place of lack and limitation. Our creator has given us life, fulfillment, finances, love. You just have to feel that I'm worthy of receiving all this and be open to receiving it and stop talking negative to you because the tongue is sharp. The tongue is very sharp. So watch your words, watch your thinking about yourself and others. Right. And the one thing that, you know, I have done a lot of work on myself and I've done a rebirthing process where I actually went into the hot tub and, and experienced my birth, but it was a different experience of feeling in the, you know, because I wasn't working on whatever limiting belief I might've had that I formed because I was walking around thinking my greatest limiting belief was that I was unworthy. No, that was another byproduct. And so when I was in the womb and I discovered that whole love thing, because we did this perfect day scenario, which brought that, I don't have as much love in my life as I want, and I'm the one stopping it. So we have to mm -hmm. be patient with ourselves because we're not a 7-Eleven society. I mean, we, are, mm -hmm. we have to be patient. So even though I have done that, I even work through the I'm unlovable and I know all these different things that happen. Then my mother died and then there's a whole new level of unlovable of how much she didn't love me that came out of the situation. But this became something different. I mean, mm -hmm. to actually watch a thought form come in that you took, because our mind tells us stories, but our mind, our brain isn't developed yet. So I, this is an emotion mm -hmm. that she was having at that time, which I learned at 29 years old. The psychic, my mother was in the room with me with a psychic and the psychic had told her she doesn't feel like you love her. What do you mean mm -hmm. she doesn't feel that? Well, she doesn't. Well, what was going on when she, you were carrying her? Well, I was worried about money. I was worried about this. I was worried about this. Well, this is how she took what you what your worries were is you didn't love her. And so mm -hmm. to feel, and I've known that, okay? But, you know, you forget these things. I mean, that was a long time ago, 29 years old. But it didn't mm -hmm. stop the growth. And it didn't stop what it felt like to be because I felt so, I just remember in that moment how safe and secure I felt inside the womb. I mean, it was the most safest feeling I think I had ever felt in my life was at that moment. And then that thought came in. And then I didn't want to be mm -hmm. here. I didn't want to be born. They forced me out of the womb. I mean, it was one trauma after another, after another, after another. But what I learned and realized during that as well is we all think we don't have, that God doesn't love us, we have this, but within whatever our life story is, is who our potential is. So I know how to go through trauma. I know how to come out of trauma. I know how to do all of that because my whole life was about 
coming back from trauma and, and stepping into the true magnificence. And we're more afraid of our greatness mm -hmm. than, our, than our shallowness. And I've always had spirit there to guide me, to help me, to take me to the next level. And yes, we have to be ready, but we also have to understand how this mind is working, that it tells stories. We have to understand our limiting beliefs, which is also our paradigms. We have to understand all those things. And I have tools now that when this limiting belief comes in of you're not lovable, it's like, well, that's not true. Well, what makes it not true? It's like, because I have this amazing man in my life. I have amazing friends in my life. So we, we see these lies that we have to stop doing. And however that is, and of course, what's the one thing I've always wanted was I wanted to have my gaggle of angels around me again, talking 100 miles an hour. And they said, you're going to live to regret that. And I said, I will never live to regret that. Now, they did wake me up at 430 in the morning and give David Bear a message. I thought that was funny. But then I also looked at the next, last 20 years of my life of where I got to here. And I'm just so at peace. You know, like I finally settled into myself. And it's because... I'm choosing to do the hard work because it's not easy to mm -hmm. live through trauma. It's not easy to remember and feel the pain that you've walked your whole life and thinking nobody loved you and thinking that you're just horrible person and undeserving. And that's, that is so far from the truth because God's always been there. I've always been provided for regardless of whatever this was telling me, I was always provided for. I've always had money. I've always had food. I've always had clothing. I've had everything that I need. Do I have as much as I want or the big? No. But you know what? I am now. I'm going for it because whatever that fear was that I also created at the time of in the in the birth, in the womb, that's gone too. I'm so on fire right now. I mean, I was talking to people at the seminar and they're doing this because I'm blasting them with my energy. I'm standing here and they're moving back like this. And I feel like I'm doing this to them, but it was my energy. It was my passion. I was lit up. I was on fire. That's how we're all supposed to live is be lit up. Yes, life will still happen. But if you're lit up living from your passion and your dream, like what you said, this outside is outside. Because God is taking care of me. He's protecting me. He's sheltering me. He's bringing whatever it is. All I have to do is when the belief comes up, a limiting belief, a paradigm, work through it and say, okay, I got through this one. Let's go to the next one because our ego will always stop us. Always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one thing I learned about love is love can be given it from anybody and our parents when we felt that sense of not feeling loved because they were in survival mode yeah. and because they were also damaged goods and didn't even know how to love I had to go yeah. through that deep cleansing of love but when I realized I don't need love from one I receive love from all and yeah. that fulfills me but God's love is something that no one else could replace and when I tap into that God love, which is self-love, really, you start to look at things differently and you start to move differently. It, it, it gets really interesting because when you look at, when I've looked at love before, I had to go through all my healing and say, where can I find the love and judgment? Where can I find the love and anger? Where can I find the love and hatred? Where can I love, find the love and hurt? And I had to see the love there because I didn't love myself. I was seeking external love because I was trying to fill in a void. And when I looked at the external to receive love, regardless if it came from friends or a lover or my parents or my siblings or my relatives, it, was always, it always came back to me void. So when I looked for love internally through God's love and knowing that all is giving me love, the trauma, pain, suffering, and all that stuff that we hold on to that, you know, the flesh gives us, it literally got dissolved so quick. And that's where when I see love, I just feel this sense of enlightenment. I feel empowered because I'm not seeking from the external because my love is internal because God is internal. And that's what really 
changed me when it came to love. And I had to open my heart. I, I fueled myself with so much love that I remember, and I mean, you were part of this journey with me last year, Kathleen, where I kept on hearing, open up your heart to love. And I'm like, I love, I'm good. And it was like, no, 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 you're, you're not even feeling the love right now. And I had to go through that journey of accepting love, more love in my life. But because I self-fulfilled myself with love, it didn't matter if it was coming from anyone else. And that right. was another interesting journey that I had to go through because I was full of it. And then here was something else Jesus said to me is now you have a lot of love to give. Now it's about receiving most of it. So it was interesting. Right. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break and continue on with this because there's so much that we can unpack with this particular topic. Welcome back, everyone, to the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. This is Kathleen Flanagan, your host, and we are streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And I have Zach Liotis in the room with us right now. Well, she's actually on the phone because, again, technical difficulties. One day we are going to get this figured out, and we will. <laughs> Someday we will. But when, we, when you were talking, Zach, about that self-love coming from within, the one thing that I do know and the one thing that I observed a lot over this weekend was that David Bearer is trying to create legends, which is people who are really stepping into their greatness and changing the world because our world is in desperate need of change, desperate need of change. And I was talking to a variety of people. And the one thing, I mean, I met some really cool spiritually awakened people, which was wonderful. And those are the people that I only pretty much talk to. But every now and then the, when you had to do something to, with your partner next to you, those are the people that were a little bit more on the shallow side. They were all about money. They were all about whatever their bullshit, par sorry, paradigm. <laughs> was, you know, they're not moving through it. I think I'll hold on to it a little while longer. Then they pay David all this money and they're, oh, I'm going through it again because I didn't get it the first time. And you're sitting here going, wow, uh, you know, I don't even want to go down the world of what I think about that. But the one thing that I told a lot of people is if you don't open your heart and heal from your heart, you're not going to have what you want. Because what I discovered years ago, and it's in my books, and I keep experiencing this over and over again, until you heal that emotional part or release the emotional ties that you have to whatever that belief is that you have, you're never going to change. You can change everything up here. You can gain the understanding. You can gain the insight. But that doesn't change your life. What changes is when you're in your heart, you feel it because there's a whole new set of dynamics around the emotional part that we created in that. And this is a biological thing that happens to us anyways. It's not something that we did, it's just what we feel because when we had a breath worker come in and she talked about so much about the body and how this is at 25 is when this finally is completely settled. So we have 25 years of garbage up here of feeling because we have no logic, we have no not reason, we're learning it, but we don't have the full thing. And so all that trauma comes in and we have to feel it. And the best way to release it is through your breath work. Breath work will take you in. That's why this, they, we were, when I was doing it, it was breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, or in through your nose, out through your mouth, breathe in through your mouth, out through your mouth, and breathe in through your nose or out through your nose. And it was which one is the one that works the best for you. And, and of course, mine was open my mouth, in and out of my mouth, because that's where I was gaining the most expansion for me to release what I needed to release for me. And you don't necessarily have to feel the pain of that emotional. Sometimes you do, because what did I do after I got off that table? I cried all Friday night. I cried all for Friday morning or Saturday morning. And then I thought I was having, I was going to go into a panic attack or pass out or something because my entire insides were shaking. Now I wasn't reliving anything. I was releasing everything in this, in this body. Like my body just shook to say, let's go, let's go get away, get away. And I, and then I was calm. Then I was grounded and I didn't have to relive any of that other stuff. I just had to be with it. And how did I handle it? I breathed. I just breathe through whatever was coming up. It's like, you know, you have a panic. What's the first thing you're doing? Your shallow breath. 
So breathe in and breathe out and take that time to settle. And, and that's how you start finding who you are and your love as well, because God is breath. I mean, you want to connect with the I am breathing. What's the first thing we all do? We have to slow down. We have to quiet the mind and it's through our breath. So I'm going to let you continue on where you were. I just wanted to bring that in to give some people an idea that you don't always have to relive a trauma. Sometimes you just have to breathe through the trauma or if the tears are coming, let the tears come. Trust that process of release because it'll be the greatest thing you ever did because you shed tons and tons off your shoulders and you feel lighter. And that's what you're trying to go back to is being that light being. And I know you're developing, you've developed more tools for this. So, I mean, if you want to share about that, you can, whatever you want to talk about, Zach, the floor is yours. Yeah, breath is life. I mean, I remember 20, oh my gosh, right now 30 years ago when I ended up in a Kundalini class and we're doing breath work and the floor stuck me and I ended up in galaxies. I had no idea what was going on. And the Kundalini teacher said, you're not breathing properly. I said, but it's natural breath. And he says, no, it's not. He says, if you watch a child breathe, you'll realize they're breathing life. When you watch an adult breathe, they're breathing in death. And why is that? Because children breathe all the way to their root chakra, they breathe all the way to their tailbone. If you bring awareness to your breath right now, you could be breathing into your throat or into your heart. You might get down to your solar plexus, but the lower extremities of your body are dead because there's no life there. And you're wondering why you are constipated or you're wondering why you feel bloated or you feel out of alignment. You're wondering why you're always in your head because you have no life force in your root and in your sacral chakra. And when you go through that and start doing those deep breathing, what you're doing is that you're breaking up that stagnant energy, which then in turn, because it's all in the spine, the nervous system starts to seize up. So you might shake and as you're shaking, something has to happen and electrical current goes through your body and tears start coming down. So that's why you have to cry it out or shake it out. You know, some people may purge it out regardless of what side it's going to come out of because it needs to be released. It's stagnant, dense energy that you've been holding on to. And sometimes since the age of 10, 11, 12. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's 15 or 20 years. It could be 40 years that you're holding on to this crap. But until you bring that life, which is breath, which is Yahweh, you know, another name of Christ, Yahweh is our breath. So when we're breathing in and out, we're breathing in Christ consciousness. And if you're not breathing Christ consciousness all the way to your root, to your foundation, to the pillars of who created you, knew you before you even got to meet yourself. So when you're going through this process, it's really about feeling enlightened throughout your whole body and releasing. And then as your nervous system starts to take place, your nervous system will calm itself down. But until you fully release a lot of things and let go, surrender, I say let go and let God, that's the famous saying, but you have to trust, belief, and have faith. And those sound easy, but a lot of people don't have that trust within themselves because they're afraid of what's on the other side. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know where to show up. So it all kind of plays a huge role. Again, I'll talk about scripture because I've always been into scripture, even in the depths of my darkness. I would pick up the Bible and say, tell me where I need to read. And I would read a piece of scripture and all of a sudden I felt like this energy force just leave me. It was like I'm fighting demons and not even realizing it. Psalm 23 was one of my favorite Psalms that I read just right through all of my depression. Now that I walk the valley of shadow death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and staff comfort me, right? So if you have that inside of you that I could walk through the shadows of darkness, I will go through the depths of my soul, but I'm not afraid to come out on the other side because you, God, are with me. I know it. I feel it. The surge is going through my body. So when you start saying the scripture, what you're doing is that you're reaching that vibrational frequency with inside of you. 
you know, seek first the kingdom and all else shall follow. When you look at that, you look at God and everything else falls into place because that's what it's meant to do. That's what you're meant to do. When you look towards the north, and I would say God's the northern star, when you look towards the north, it doesn't matter what you're going through. All of a sudden, you might feel like you're alone. I remember when I was going through darkness, I said, Jesus, am I by myself? He says, no, you can't see me because I'm carrying you. And it was just that thing saying, holy Jesus, like, I do feel like someone's carrying me. I wish I was, I was in the knowingness of how I could carry myself, but I didn't need to know how to carry myself because God's got me. You know, the shortest verse in the Bible is Jesus wept. Jesus cries with us. He sees our pain. He sees our suffering. He, he goes through the tears with us. And then he wipes up and says, okay, like become empowered. Recognize the power that you have within you in all these depths of darkness that you're going through, confusion, through anger, through guilt, through shame, through resentment. What the flesh has put upon you, the spirit can take away from you. So when you, when I want you to look at the Bible, not as a religious book, but as an energetic frequency, religion is man-made or, you know, God is one, but there's so many different religions out there. How could that be so? So when you look at the Bible as an energetic frequency, when you look at God as an energetic frequency, you start to change your perspective and start to see the truth of who you are. Everyone lives in this fake world. Look at, the, look at everyone out there. A lot of people are living a fake life looking for realness in others. How can that even be possible? So when you start to remove your mask and start to let go of what you think was and what should be and allow for the truth to come through, your life will change because now you have to believe that what's on the other side of the bridge is for your greater good, for your higher consciousness. So trust within yourself that you're taking those right steps. And if you don't know how to take those right steps, or if you don't know how to even begin or where to begin, that's where you reach out for help. You know, sometimes people say, oh, contact your friends and family and they'll help you. That's the worst to contact because they just give you their opinion. It doesn't mean it's always good for you. So contact someone that you could actually work with. Contact someone that could see the light for you, not just speak their opinion for you. You know, you could take someone's opinion and run with it, and now you're going in their direction. Or you could take someone's opinion and dissect it and create your own path. Then this is the thing, when you work with the flesh, you could get lost, but when you work with the spirit, you awaken. You're literally awakened within yourself, but you have to go through those changes, and change could be very scary at times but again when you seek first the kingdom all else shall follow and that's what you have to recognize and that's what you have to look within yourself and say okay i trust every move i make is going to be for my greater good i believe what's on the other side of this bridge is for me to grow to evolve and to receive god's abundance and sometimes we need that other person to get us through that because when i was in the darkest moment of my life and it's in the third book, Awakened, when I was in that darkest place of my life and I didn't think I was going to live and, and I was so close to death and I didn't even realize how close to death I was, I, had a, I got a, um, a reading done. And I hadn't had a reading done in forever, but I was said, this woman's really, really remarkable. Let her do that. So I did. And what she did is she brought out even more trauma because of what she was seeing of what happened that I, cause I still had lots of questions, but what she did, the one thing she did, cause she knew, she knew I was like hanging on by my fingernails and already one hand was already down. And she said, hang on. Like, cause I think it was done in March and she said, hang on another two weeks is going to lighten up. And in six months, you're going to have a totally different life. And I couldn't, I couldn't see that. I couldn't see it at all, but I wanted, but because she said, it's going to change, stick around for the party. Cause the party's here. You just have not see it yet because you're still in this final stage of just going mm-hmm. deeper and finding that. And so what I did is I took her belief in me that I was going to survive the other side to get there. Cause I didn't have it in me. Cause I was ready to say, 
I'm done and I'm going to die and I'm okay with dying. But that wasn't, Mm -hmm. that wasn't where I was supposed to go. But her belief gave me the strength to go another two weeks. And when April came, she was right. That intense Mm -hmm. pressure I was under lifted and it kept getting lighter and lighter and lighter. And within eight months, I was a totally different person, but I couldn't see it because I was in the trenches. So when you say reach out to somebody other than friends and family, whatever that looks like to you, do it. Because sometimes you just need that person believing in you because you can't even see it anymore. And that's why we Mm -hmm. have suicide. That's why our youth is killing themselves because there's nobody there for them. Nobody's showing them love and compassion. And that's what we need sometimes when we're in the trenches because everybody has this wonderful life and there's no friggin' way they have a wonderful life. Because it's like, if you're having such a wonderful life, why are you miserable? Why are you a bully? Why do you not have money if you have such a wonderful life? No, you don't. You're putting an act on because that's what everybody else is doing, but be real. Well, it depends what you define a wonderful life, too. I mean, I could go to third world countries. They have no money, but they have more life than multimillionaires that I know. So that really is a huge thing. I know when I was traveling to a lot of places in the South, and they're living in tin roofs, and they have community, and they have love, and then they have unity. They have dinner together. They share everything. So that, to me, is riches. Money is not riches. Money is conveniences. So when you find those riches, you start to grow from that place there and you could have your conveniences. Like we said before, God is always providing. And when you are finding that place of what is, what feels rich to me, my, my girlfriends are my richness. My happiness is my richness. Sharing love, sharing, you know, the word is my richness. And is finance is my richest? It, it, it isn't because it's my convenience. It does bring happiness because I'm, I'm not struggling. And when you find that within you and that you release the struggle, that's when you start feeling that richness come out of you and then you get into this alignment. So there's a lot to be said with, you know, what you find. I know Bob Marley says, do you think money brings you happiness? And I can't remember how he said it, but it was really true because what brought me happiness once upon a time was me just being able to get out of bed and not feeling depressed for the day. That was success for me. I was broke, but success was getting out of bed and feeling happy. And then as I was getting out of bed every day, I reached five and six figures and then it became convenient again. Now the struggle is gone. And then you realize I had to work on my happiness because with happiness, then you start to get into manifestation. But there are a lot of wealthy, miserable people out there. Absolutely. You can't deny that. And there's a lot of people that could be wealthy and depressed because they they don't know what full fulfillment is because they're chasing something that doesn't give them fulfillment. You chase God, you'll have fulfillment. You have riches. So I think we have to change the perspective of what success means and what riches means and, you know, what is important to you. Yes, money is important and it's spiritual. At the end of the day, when people say money is not spiritual, it is spiritual because the more money you make, God says, now go out and help people. God wants to give you riches because now he's going to say, hey, there's a man on the street down there. Go buy him dinner or go buy that person's shoes or give to that charity. And that's what the riches are in spirituality. It's not about being poor. Remember when I first started doing this work, he was saying, you're charging for what you're doing? I'm like, yeah, because God has a different mission for me. I got to help the homeless. I got to help the children. I got to pay my bills too. And if you don't see it as money being spiritual, then you're not the person I want to work with. Because your life changes when you start to realize that money is just an energetic frequency. Life is an energetic frequency. God is an energetic frequency. So when we get into that energetic frequency and start growing and recognizing and evolving and putting our own meaning into words, when you put your own meaning into words and find that fulfillment once again, right, through Christ's fulfillment, then you start to grow and move different. I remember when I was going through my lessons of judgment, 
And it was like, you know, you sit there and you're judging someone and be like, so in that judgment that you just judge that person, or is it that you're lacking? And that's why now I might look at someone and be like, okay, what am I lacking? Because if I'm judging that person, I'm lacking something inside of me, which was the greatest lesson of judgment. I rarely judge people because they're, no, I'm not better than anyone. My judgment came from a place of lack, came from a place of lack of self-love too. So when we go and grow, and I said go and grow because it is work. It's not easy to step into the shoes of God because you'll lose friends, you'll lose followers, you'll lose, people will start talking about you. And I always say, who cares? I remember when I was going through this, Jesus approached me in one of my meditations and I said, you know, I lose a lot of friends when I talk about you. He says, imagine how I feel. And I was, it was done. It was game over when he said that. Or I say to him, you know, how do I heal through imposter syndrome? He says, you have to look at me. Am I, do, do you think I have imposter syndrome? So that's the whole premise. When you're, when you're tapping into Christ consciousness, you need to clear out the flesh. You need to clear out the ego to really recognize your own personal truth. So I, I have written a workbook called Pray, Meditate, Journal, a 30-day invocation to spiritual renewal. And every day you go through scripture, you feel into the scripture, you do a meditation, you write your own prayer. And then by the, you know, day 20 to 30, we get into the manifestation mode because now the first 10 days you're clearing, the second 10 days you're calling in God to guide you through the process. And then the last 10 days, you're now working with God to bring you in manifestation zone. So pray, meditate, journal, a 30-day invocation to spiritual renewal. And where can they find that, Zach? So, I mean, I think that's great that you, you've got this to help everyone, but um, where could they find that? It- sure. They could go on to my website. It's courses, C-O-U-R-S-E-S, dot B as bold, F as fierce, U as unstoppable, club, dot com, and they could find the workbook there, and uh, it's for purchase there. Okay. Yeah, I've seen her. I've seen what she's, I've been watching her make this. So it's been really pretty awesome to watch um, the process unfold for Zach on this. And I I can't believe that the time is up already. It's mind blowing to me. So um, if you guys really liked the show and thank you so much, Zach, for coming on the show and maybe next time, next month, you will be able to see your face for once. Um, I, if you like the show, feel free to subscribe or give the link to somebody if you found some value in this to give it to your friends and family. And again, this is Kathleen Flanagan. I do have a de-stress meditation, which will actually help you to bring in a higher vibration. It'll help to release some of the traumas that you're feeling. And if you want to do that, there is a free three-minute de-stress meditation. It's a great thing to either wake up to the in the morning or go to sleep with at night to just reset and recalibrate. And we are going, I can't remember what his name is off the top of my head. And I forgot to bring the calendar because I've been trying to get back from the, but anyways, I have an amazing guest coming on next week. Be sure to come in um, Tuesday at 4 PM Eastern standard time. This is Kathleen Flanagan with the Journey of an Awakening Spirit. We are streaming on the Bold Brave TV network. And from my heart to yours, I hope you have a fabulous week.